Hello, everyone. Welcome to Believe in Co- Boston College, Episode 8. I'm your host, Trevor Hash, joined by Jeremy Trubot and Matthias Kiwanuka. BC was 4-4 four and four in the world soon to be ending. I'm obviously exaggerating for a dramatic effect there. And all of a sudden, BC is 6-4. and four. Phil Dracovic is back. They've won two straight, fresh off a big road win over Georgia Tech. So, Matthias, let's start with you. Just what's it like for you to you know watch Phil back and just revitalize a team that really needed a boost? Man, I, like, I, I thoroughly enjoyed the enthusiasm with which the guys were playing with. That was like the first thing that I noticed was that like, it was like a shot in the arm, like, especially the offensive line. I thought the offensive line played significantly better. And Jeremy and I, we talked about this off camera and trying to figure out like, what is it about? We'll we'll get into it. Like, what is it about, um, you know, playing with a guy like that, that, that makes all of a sudden everybody plays better the way that I try to um, uh, talk about it. So I do, other shows, right? So I have uh, uh, ESPN Radio 98.7 on Sunday mornings in New York. And then I just did a show, MSG Network, called Odds with Ends. And and that's like betting stuff. But I'm still always talking about like, like from a player's perspective, like, so like everything I do is like, I'm not a gambler, you know, they don't expect me to like, you know, I make picks and stuff like that, but like, they don't expect me to give like, like analysis on gambling and stuff like that. So I give, you know, my take on like, what a, how a player feels about certain things, you know what I mean? So like when like Von Miller gets traded or, you know, something happens or, you know, like monkey butt for the Cowboys coach, you know what I mean? Like these, these little things, like, like what does a, a player think about it? So um, this is good. Like this is good practice. Cause these are, these, these are the types of things that, that I'm, you know, asked in my other jobs and stuff like that. Um, I think, you know, winning is infectious, and having like a winner, like a, a guy who is like, you know, confident, confidence is infectious. Like having a guy who, who's got like that swag and like, like just comes in and, and energizes it. Like he was, he was our Cam Newton, you know what I'm saying? Like, like that's how they described it, you know, in, in Carolina, like, like he looked the part, he, he came out slinging that ball down the field, um, Zay looked amazing. Jay Williams looked amazing. Like it, he made everybody um, who was catching the ball obviously look better, but they weren't always. Ca- they, these all these weren't all like perfect passes. You know, it wasn't like it wasn't it wasn't like they were like right there. But I think the way that he plays and the confidence that the team has in him, it makes everybody go a little bit harder. It makes everybody play a little bit better. He's and this is just from the outside looking in, like, I, I wish I was like in the locker room and like, you know, could really get a sense of it. But um, it just, it just made, it took me back to like, like just the, the real genuine days of playing football when the money wasn't so much involved. You're not really like, yeah, you're thinking about going to the NFL, but like, you're more just like enjoying it. We're going to go back to the dorms afterward and get it in and like, and like have some fun just playing ball. You know, they were just out there playing ball. So um I just, I enjoyed it, man. I, I thoroughly enjoyed watching the game as a spectator, even though like I'm always have a vested interest when, when, you know, the Eagles or the Giants play, like it was just fun. It was a fun game to watch. I know that's a lot. Jeremy, what do you think? Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I mean, it was fun to watch, man. I tell you, I, uh, I was thinking that when I watch it, I, we were talking about the O-line, like what, why would they play different? I, I still see people in his like lap when he throws the ball and stuff. He just, he plants his feet differently. I think I was trying to explain to you when we were talking on the phone that like as an offensive lineman, I didn't really like it when someone would take off running or they had like happy feet and you just really know where they're going to be kind of around the pocket type people instead of just planting their feet, deliberate steps, you know, as an offensive lineman, you have deliberate steps and if your feet are in the ground, you can move people, you know, you're like you're not caught off balance type thing. Uh, when I, when I see his footwork, like it's, you know, it's, he drops back, he plants his feet and he goes, he has a plan, that confidence you talk about, Mm -hmm. there's a zip on the ball. And so like when the ball, it's only catchable by a receiver or it's kind of overthrown or it's underthrown, whatever it is, like it's just playable for that guy. I feel like it's what, yeah, it's ball placement. And it's like, it's zipped in there differently. But I, I noticed just for me, and I don't know, I'm not a quarterback coach, but like, I just see his feet, like he's one, two, three, go, or like one, two, three, five, set, go, you know? And like the line has, a. I know I had a number in my head. And like once I a guy, if I saw a guy's eyes, I'd be like, he's starting to go. I was like, I'll just give him a final push. He's good to go. He's not going to hit the quarterback. You know, you go, your guys don't get rid of the ball. 
other times you're kind of just like, eh, you know, you're not really like sure where he's going to go. So for an offensive lineman, I think that's huge. And then for the receivers, I mean, they're catching the balls. They're like making extra effort. It's that little fire. You talk about that spark. Maybe he's calm and like the other guys are, you know, nervous Nellies, right? Or maybe he's just a funny guy who relieves, who provides thought, some comic, Yeah, I thought about that too. Relief. Yeah. He's just that guy, you know, like if he's yeah. a guy, if you need rah-rah, he's a guy if you need that. And like maybe just like, you know, I don't know. Uh, it's just his team, you know. Obviously, it's obvious that that's what it is because yeah. it's it's been fun to watch the past two games. I watched the first game that he came back with Gosder, chairless, our old tackle, mm-hmm. and uh, it was hard to pay attention because we were having such a good time, but it was just so much more fun to watch. Yeah, I, I was thinking about like towards like like as I got older at BC, right, and you can – you can kind of tell when a young guy comes in the game and their eyes are like wide yeah. open, you know, and you're just like, and it's like, as, as a vet, you're kind of like, Oh crap. You know what I mean? Like we all know we won't get out of this guy. You're like, you know, and, there, and there's so many different ways you can go about it. And I, I'd use jokes like, Hey, you know, boy, your, your shoes untied. They're like, what? Like I'm messing with you, bro. Get your head up. Let's go. Like, and it would just like take them out of their, their mind for, for a quick second. And then like, like, and then they can, you know, they, they're laughing and choking out there on the field. And then it allows them like to like play free or, or you need to know, like there's a, there's a guy who has messed up <laughs> repeatedly on a, on a specific play. It's like, you know what I mean? Hey, <laughs> screen, screen and draw down. All right. <laughs> Don't go flying up the field, you know, like, so you could like alert him and like re- remind him of something. Like, oh, thanks, Kiwi. Like, you know, like I wasn't, yeah, I know you weren't thinking it. You haven't thought about it all season long. You know what I mean? So he, he reminds me, it, it kind of like I had, he had that, I, I felt like he has that, like, you know what I mean? Like that ability to like look around and, and understand how to, you know, either calm people down, motivate them or um, inspire them. You know what I mean? And then have that, like that personal confidence, like that, that swag, you know, like he's throwing that ball, like that ball is going, he knows where he's supposed to go with the ball. And like you said, like ball placement, like it's either, if it's overthrown, it's overthrown intentionally. Like I know like either he's going to catch it or it's going to go over his head or, you know, it's going to, he's going to catch it or it's going to go down at the dirt. I'm not going to overthrow this ball like that. Um, that was good. One of my first notes was Gar was off to a great start, and then he fumbled the ball. But, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> but, but I did. But I did love the. I love the the shake he he was given. Um, I hadn't I hadn't really seen that. I mean, I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I hadn't really seen a whole lot of that. You know, he's more of like a power, like you know, downhill, you know, one cut kind of guy. So like, I, I enjoyed watching um watching the, watching the shake. I also watched it condensed version after knowing what the outcome of the game was. So I was, I was excited the whole time, you know, as, as I was following the score. Um, Cause I oh, they got this in the bag. Yeah. No problem. <laughs> What's that? Oh, they got this in the bag. No problem. Yeah. You yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like as, as I was following the, the, the score, um, where's that? Cause I, I go to New York. So I live in Florida, but I fly to New York on Saturdays to, to do the shows. Um, and so I wasn't able to like watch it live, but I'm following the score. Like I was nervous, like watching the the, the score, you know, go up and up and up. Um, so I, I, but like being able to to watch it was um, it was good. Man. I'm, I'm just happy for it, man. Those kids, they're working their butts off, and you know, I like to, I like to see them get a win. I was I was joking. Um, this is this is the side, right? So my. Um, my sis, my sister's talking about her niece's teams and how they're, you know, they're struggling right now. And it reminded me of St. Simon. Like I grew up on the east side of Indianapolis. Yeah. And like I played on some t- like we were bad. Like we were perennially bad at sport. Like not just like, oh, we had a bad basketball season. Like we would lose every football game and then roll into basketball and lose every basketball game. And and it was just like it, it was like disappointing it was demoralizing as a little kid you're like you know you come off every game and cheerleaders are there like we are proud of you you know and it was like mm. but i i remember that <laughs> like like psychologically that stuff is it has stayed with me i'm 38 years old and i remember walking off the basketball court in like fifth grade like being completely demoralized multiple times in a season and um and you know and so we're talking about it on the other show about you know like teams like the lions and and how difficult it has to be to play on on these teams and stuff like that. And I told her, I was like, I have to go back to St. Simon to think about like losing that bet. So I can only imagine um, waking up every day and working as hard as you you have to to get to a certain level and and not 
you know, not winning the game, even if whether you're good or bad, like how that, that affects you. So this was like the complete opposite. Like I felt like, you know, from the moment they stepped on that field, you know, whether it's Dracovic or the, the, the coaching job that they did or um, whatever it was, it was like, you, you could tell that they felt like they were, they were in it. You know what I mean? Like they, they felt like, like there was, there was a swag to it. Like, like I, I written down, um, like the, the taunting penalty Zay got, right? Like, unless that costs you the game, I like it. You know what I mean? Like, like he, he had like, you know what I mean? Like he had, he had a little bit of yeah. like, like a little swag to him. Like, like, you know, like there was a confidence. There's an, there's an air of confidence. Like, no, nah, man, like, like, I don't care what the record is. Like I'm burning you. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, like, you know, you know, you know, when you have like a personal battle within a game, you know, with a guy and it's like, like I, cause there, there are times like, as a defensive end, like, you know, you could be getting blown out, right? But it's like at some point, it's third and long, you're still gonna have to throw the ball. So I'm looking at this guy. I was like, all right, like you could talk all the crap you want. I'm still whooping yo ass. Like, you know what I mean? Like I can still, I can still beat you. Like your team might be beating my team, but I can still beat you. Like I saw individual guys out there winning their one-on-one battles on offense and defense, and that made me proud. Like that's the kind of team, that's the kind of play that um that inspires everybody else on the team and becomes infectious. And that's how you build. And that's how you, um, you become good. So that was a roundabout way of getting to that little point, but <laughs> it yeah, works. Let's try, try something new, try and storytelling this week. Guys. Yeah, it was definitely impressive. That was what Halfley said. His biggest takeaway was that, you know, they were down 21, seven, a lot of teams would have folded even last year or earlier this year, they might've folded, but, you know, with Phil Beck and everyone, they were a confident bunch, just more resilient than he's seen in the past. So I thought it was impressive. Like you said, down 21, seven, no finger pointing, nothing, nothing like that. Just, you know, we got this, we can bounce back. And then all of a sudden it's 28, 21. And then you felt like they were going to win the whole second half just based on the way they were playing in the first. So Jeremy, I'm curious, just your thoughts on, you know, the comeback and the resilience they showed. And do you have any favorite comebacks of your own from back in the day? Uh, we, well, i tell you, I was impressed. Yes. With the comeback. Uh, I'm impressed with what I think uh, we've talked about a little bit, but Phil, you know, I think what he brings is that confidence we just talked about, but it's almost like you never felt like you were out of it with a quarterback like that. You know, it's like where he can sling the rock. You're like, we're good. Like if we have to, so that's a good feeling to have. Uh, yeah. We have one. I was going to compare him to Paul Peterson earlier uh, a little bit. I mean, to me about like with that aura of like when Paul was in the game, we were like, Oh, we have a shot. And uh, we were talking a little bit about like the Notre Dame game. That was a game where I remember like I'm from Indiana. We're from Indiana. You know, we wanted to win against Notre Dame. We never lost to him. No big deal. Uh, but anyways, you know, took the grass from that game immature. But still, you know, I remember like not really like I remember thinking to myself, I can never go home if we lose type thing. It's not really true, but I felt that way. And uh, but anyways, I remember thinking we're not really going to lose. I never felt like we were going to lose. And that's must how be those like how those guys felt. And uh you know, it's, it's always a good feeling when you have a quarterback and or a team that you believe in each other. And so and when there's not the finger pointing and there's not the screaming on the sideline, there's more or less like, what do we got to do and how we got to do it? Let's go do it. And so, you know, that's what they've been doing. And that's what we did a lot. And so that's, it's that's, fun to that's watch a great team. That's what the great teams do. Like when, yeah. when, I, when I'm talking about like, um, you know, NFL stuff. Right. So. The, the Bills lose to the Jags, right? And I'm like, I'm sitting there, I'm like, did the Bills lose to the Jags or did the offense for the Bills lose? Because they only gave up nine points. And in my book, if you're in the NFL, you give up nine points, you're supposed to win that game, right? Yeah. But I'm, I'm joking, you know what I mean? But, like, when I played on on good teams, like, that was, that was the sense. It's like, I did my job, y'all didn't do your job. But I believe that next week you're going to do your job, so don't sweat it, you know what I mean? Like, don't worry about it. We're good. We'll come back. We're going to bounce back. We're, we're going to do it together. When you're on a bad team and that happens, it's literally like, I did my job. Why didn't you do your job? You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. you're angry. You're angry yeah. with them. It's there's no, there's no time for, for joking around. You know, it's not, you know, you can't cut them any slack because you haven't been doing your job all season. Now I'm getting frustrated with you. You <laughs> drop one here and there, like the Cowboys, they drop one right to Denver or whoever but they bounce back and beat the crap out of, you know, our boy. Um, but, you know what I mean? Like that, they bounce back so well. It's like, Ooh, Hey guys, like the league, you guys got to be on notice. Like when teams can do that, when teams can bounce back 
together as a, as a group after suffering a loss and, and come back and put like a, put that, you know, they're, they're on the same page, right? Like what I was asking people was like, when, when you hear stuff coming out of the locker room, are they answering questions together? Is it like, we won or this and that, or can, is it, cause it's, it could be noticeable sometimes. Like there's some segregation between the team, you know, like offense, defense, or, you know, even coaching, like overly blame one side and, you know, and, you know, like everybody says that the, the, the company lines, like, Oh, we gotta get better as a team. We gotta do this and that, but you know what they're, what they're alluding to. Right. Um, this was, this was a team performance. This was everybody feeding off of everybody and like, and like going, you know, going after it. And I, I do remember like those years when we were, I don't remember that Notre Dame game specifically. I got hit in the head a lot more, I think. Um, so I usually go to you for your, for the, or like the memories. You usually say something and it'll, it'll jog my memory of it. Like, Oh yeah. <laughs> but, um, but I remember like the feeling of that 2004 year and like, like really feeling like, yo, we got a chance. Like we can, we could, we could be dominant. Like we could beat anybody. Like we could, we can go out there. We can, we can play, we can perform. Like it was, um, it was, a, it was a really good feeling to feel like you have a complete team. And as a defensive guy, you always feel that you you have control over a lot of the game, right? Um, your defense and you usually play special teams, if you know, depending on your position or whatever, but it, it's obvious. Like if you don't have a quarterback, like, in this league, once you get to college, like you, your team is hamstring. Like, it's like, it's really difficult to play with an inferior quarterback. Like, like they, they control so much of the game. So having Phil back, like, man, that's, that's a big boost for the team. Great. And switching gears here to the defense. I'm just curious, you know, I mean, they've been, they've been playing really solid football overall. They gave up 30 points to Georgia tech, but that wasn't really indicative of the way they played only nine in the second half. One in the first half was on a kickoff, which obviously that kid was pretty explosive. It happens, but, and then three, three points against Virginia tech Syracuse, they were pretty good outside of five minutes. So what's been working so well defensively in your eyes, their, their past defenses, I think has been great. They, uh, they've actually given up the fewest completions in the country. I don't know if you guys have heard that stat, but kind of wild. Uh, it's kind of obviously a little bit skewed because teams are running the ball pretty well. <laughs> but <laughs> but well, well, you ain't got to bring that up, man. <laughs> like, I like hey, the first part of that. Hey, the, the stat holds. It's a great, it's an impressive stat. You just got to take it in context a little bit, but what are your thoughts on the way the defense has been playing so far in the past two games? I, um, <laughs> I, I didn't, I didn't see like this week when I, when I turned it on, I didn't see the same, like, like, passion like you know what i mean like they weren't they weren't, they weren't like hitting everybody like the same way like they played they played well they didn't start off the game as strong right so i, I was like watching in the beginning i was like oh crap i already knew the outcome of the game but like like watching i was like there's some guys like standing around like it wasn't they weren't like flying like throwing your nose in there and all that kind of stuff um uh schematically there was no edge to the defense to begin it like it was just like falling it was like you know it's like the ball was just rolling off the table like either side of the defense whoop, out there, whoop, out there. so so that was um, that was disturbing, and then um, the the three man rush. Like I was sitting, like I, I I can't I can't stand it. Like I, I get it, I get that there's a place for it. I get it has usage. I just don't think it's in football. I don't I don't understand. That's <laughs> <laughs> where well. Not sure where where else you suggest it might be, but <laughs> point taken. <laughs> <laughs> three man rush. It, it was like. Because I'm I'm joking because I remember every single time I would come off the field and it was always like it would be like me and you know Dave like Dave Tollison right like like we were the the sacrificial lambs that they would throw out there for the Giants like all right guys go out there you know what I mean it's like we need we need we need speed up front you know what I mean for a prevent situation <laughs> it's like it's me him and like a big guy in the middle and we're just out there getting smacked like I mean it's like you feel like you're getting hit in the face by like 10 people because there's two offensive linemen assigned to everybody. God bless you. If they, you know, tight end doesn't release right away. Like, you're just like, it's like, you know, you can, you can get a sack. Don't get me wrong. If they hold it long enough and you're like, you're whatever you're fighting, but it's like, it's a dog fight. Right. And you're outmatched and they know it and you know it, but you just got to keep like chugging. Um, so when, so when we, when I, when I see them give up, you know, a pass on that, I'm just like, you just, you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm just, just go forward, go, go get him. You know, like the, the guys behind, you know, I am about to say they earn checks too, but like, you know, they got scholarships too. They should be able to, you know, to, to cover for a little bit, allow, allow the guys up front to rush. I, I just don't agree with the three man rush unless it's like a legit like prevent situation. Um, you got layout to make tackles. Um, uh, 
I like at the end of the game, uh, that stunt that they ran, you know, it was, it was like, it was perfect. You know, like they, 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 they timed it up. Like, you know, when you're the inside guy, you're the tackle and you're looping outside, like you got to like get your shoulder on the, you know, on the hip or on of that tackle and then continue to get up field. You know, a lot of guys will go too wide or they'll try to like come back in and lose contain like he hit and continue to get a field. And as the end loops around, it, it just like falls into his lap, you know what I mean? But it's like his technique put him in the perfect position to, you know, accept and receive that. That's what you were talking about. Like Jeremy, like with um, scrambling quarterbacks, how you never really know, like, like how to block for them or like where they are. Like, that's what we're taught, right? Like, it's like, this guy is going to come to you. Just everybody maintain a push at the same level. Just don't create gaps in the, the defensive line. Everybody move at the same level. This is not time for your best effing pass rush move. Like, I don't want to see spin moves. I don't want to just push. You need a, a consistent push and so he'll come to somebody. He's going to try to sneak out and you get an opportunity. I know you guys were frustrated because we, you'd be sitting there and it's like, it doesn't seem like it's going to work. You know, you're just like, you're just like literally like push and push and push. Oh, he's right here. You know what I mean? Like got a sack, you know what I mean? Just because he picked my lane to, to come through. So um, defensively, I thought they, you know, they started slow, um, but they, but they really picked it up. Um, and then there was just, you know, great effort. You know, they, they continued to continue to give effort. I saw the gap integrity wasn't necessarily there all the time. Like, I'm not going to sit here and like, light people up and like call people out names and stuff like that. Cause I really enjoyed the game. But, but I think what happens is they did put a lot of points up on the board, um, you know, but you know, punt return or kickoff return, you can't really count. And then that, that one, the fake punt, you know, like when you have to, you get off the field and then they, they run a fake punt and they get it. Now you got to go back out there on the field. I thought, you know, we responded well to that. Um, sudden change. Sudden chat, yeah. Like <laughs> you, you get your helmet off, you, you try to sit down. Like, hey, defense! You're like, you got to be kidding me, you know. But but you got to but you got to do it. Um, but uh, what was it? What was the other point? Oh, yeah, like the gap integrity. But what I what I saw was it was it was people like fighting, right? So it's like they're they're trying to make a play. Like when teams are like running the ball on you, it's frustrating. Like it becomes like, like you're, you're dog tired, you know, you're, you're in there, you're grinding. Like it's easier to pass rush on third down than it is to, you know, go, you know, first and second, so it's like, it did it all the way down the field, you know, you gotta get off the field. Um, but I, I saw some guys who were, you know, maybe they're holding their whole, and then they're trying to like throw their, throw a guy like out of the gap. You could tell like, they're just frustrated. They just want to make a play. And then whoop, there goes the ball, right. Right. Where you just, you know, you vacated your gap. That's that's the um, the discipline thing. Like I, I would like to see a little bit more discipline. You know, whoever's got contained, get contained. You know, like if you're supposed to push it out to the sidelines, and then, then it should keep bouncing all the way out to the sidelines. If somebody's supposed to be containing the defense, then you need to show up. You know, and and make an impact. Um, but we got turnovers, and we got we got hits, and we were running the ball, and we got the win. Um, the Barry coming up, like laying people out. Jay Williams, a deep ball. Like there were, there were some really good things to, to build on. Um, Is it a good thing if your safeties are coming up and making big hits? It can, it can supply some uh, like energy and yeah, some enthusiasm. It, it shouldn't be their job. <laughs> you know, it shouldn't safety. be their job. If your safeties, you're leading tackler, you got some issues, but that's, go ahead. I, was just, I mean, you talk about like gap, like gap integrity and stuff. Mm -hmm. And like guys like trying to make splash plays and stuff. I mean, you can make big splash plays, but you give up big splash plays. That's my, pro that's been my problem with the defense all year. They're not bad. They're good, but it, it's, it's, it's these plays that shouldn't happen. You know what I mean? That annoy me. And, but you talk about like three men rush and stuff. It's the same thing with offense. I mean, football is just annoying sometimes to watch when you think it should be your way. But I mean, uh, with a three man rush and stuff, like what's up with, Teams being able to run anywhere they want to go against us. You know, I don't understand that so much. Uh, it's, you know, the shiftier the guy, of course, the harder he is to tackle and stuff. But, I mean, I just saw them shove a power down our face. That makes me mad as a, as a lineman, you know. It's like you shouldn't be able to just do a gap scheme and get plus 10. And they do that. So, what's up with that? You know, like, I don't know. When I watch it, I'm just sitting there thinking to myself, I'm like, all right. And I was like, are these guys just holding their gap and trying to funnel it for the linebackers and the safeties to make plays? It's not supposed to be the safety, maybe a linebacker, but why aren't the defensive linemen doing better? And that's my only, you might not have an answer, but when I watch it, I just wish I, I would see 
more yeah. dominant play out of the bigger guys. Yeah, I think for me to to really be critical of it, I need to be in the building, be in the in the in the film room and understand like you know, what the defense is asking them to do. What is the defensive philosophy? Like, are you asking these guys to penetrate and get up the field and you're sacrificing, you know, gap integrity or are you asking them to maintain like a, a solid wall? Because I played on defenses that ask you to do different things, you know, but I mean, some things are just, you could just, you could just tell, like you, you shouldn't be in the, in the lap of the linebackers. Like you shouldn't be going that. I know that for facts. Like you shouldn't be going this way. Um and, you know, then somebody pulls around their ceiling like way too easily, you know, like it's like like that that gap is is created, you know, just with the influence of the, you know, the puller coming around. So um, I, I think, uh, you know, a lot of it just has to do with like heart, desire, you know, defeat the man in front of you. Um, understanding your job, and that, that's exactly what I was, when I say understanding your job. Like there's there's two ways: either you're penetrating, or you're you know you're you're a flat wall, and your your gap sound. Um, whichever way it is, you gotta you gotta understand it. You gotta be able to anchor yourself in there and put the right foot in the ground. If somebody's coming to kick you out, same foot, same shoulder, there, but stuff them back in the hole. Um, you know, if you're two gapping, then you, you gotta you, you might have to go for a ride, but you gotta you gotta you gotta make sure that you're you're holding up you know, for, for the linebackers to, to come downhill. Um, it's, 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 it's simple stuff. I feel, I feel like most D-line play is, is simple and it's easily correctable if they understand what they're being asked to do within the defense. Yeah. I mean, right. <laughs> never mind. I was ready to make a funny joke. I was like, aren't, isn't defensive guys a bunch of single digit test scores anyways? I, like, I've shouldn't it be that. simple? <laughs> I mean, on the Wonder League, you know, it's a you joke. know what it is. No, it's, it's like, not. A, it's, you know, it's not a joke. It's, 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 it's not, not a, joke. a joke. It's simple. See ball, get ball. Yeah. But like, also, just do your job. But I don't. I'm not. You know, I'm just here to complain because that's what I do sometimes. But like, you know, I, I just don't like. But I also, I don't like splash plays. But I see the beauty in like, you know, run the ball when you want type thing. Don't give up big plays. But then when you do give up big plays, it's a problem. But when you have a big, when you have a good quarterback, you can throw the ball down to four or down the field and you can run the ball whenever you want offense. Like we do Boston college, like then playing defenses like that is like, okay. But when you have a quarterback who's just average, like you can't, I don't know. Do they take enough chances? Do they take too many chances? Do they get ran on too easily? I mean, like in my eyes, uh, special teams gives up splash plays every once in a while. I mean, like if, if you're going to play like that, then you need a quarterback who can just launch the ball down the floor or down the field. I keep saying floor down the field and score some touchdowns. I wish. Yeah. Kind (laughs) of. You know, it's basketball season almost, or it is. And, uh, you know, from Indiana, man, we're talking about it. Kind of missed it a little bit, but no. <laughs> football was the most fun. I don't know. What about you? You almost played basketball. I, I did, but I'm a basketball player at heart. I, I still, I'm still a struggling I feel that power forward. I, I'm 100%. We, uh, we, we, we used to joke inside of every defensive end is a is a rejected power forward. Like we, <laughs> there. I am not joking. We used to go over to the the Nets when they used to be in Jersey at their practice facility. Like Corey Webster was cool. I don't, I don't put names out there. Whatever. And anyway, Corey Webster had a key, so we would go in there and like mm. play, and um, and like <laughs> every everybody on that team thought that they could have played in the NBA. Everybody. <laughs> None of us could. I mean, maybe, maybe like there, there maybe like a couple. Like there may have been like there are some people. We had some some pure shooters. I, I was like I was impressed with you know, but like, like everybody thought that they were they should have been good enough. I'm a professional athlete. I just chose football. No, you didn't. <laughs> no, you didn't, bro. So, I'm here to say I didn't. I didn't either. Football chose me. Are you um, telling me you you knew your you knew your place? So what like these defensive linemen on our team should do is just know their place, stay in the gap. I, I think you have a, I think you have a, you have a, you have a time, you know, like you have a, you have your own, like you have your, there's a, there's a, cause uh, every, like every offensive lineman was an incredible athlete. You know what I'm saying? Like you guys were just bigger. That's why a lot of you guys lose all that weight when you, after you retire and you're like, you go back to whatever, but like, like you offensive linemen, you, you watch their like highlight films when they're in ice. You're like, damn, like you were dunking the ball. You're doing, they were doing all kinds of stuff. And then you have to get big to, to play. Um, damn. I had, a, I had a point that I was trying to make um, earlier about like, defense. Oh no. So defensive line play. Right. So like defensive line play, the reason, in my opinion, you see like D linemen was such like, like swag and like, you know, whatever, as opposed to like, you know, most linebacker meeting rooms, like, like when I, when I switched from 
DN to linebacker in, in a 4-3, not like a – I wasn't like a 3-4 linebacker. Where I, was at, I was legit, like, up on the line, hand in the dirt, and then back on the, you know, second level, like, trying to play in space. Like, the D-line meeting room, like, we're joking around. Like, we're throwing water bottles and, you know, like, half the day and all kinds of stuff. Like, there's only so much, like, technical stuff that you have to get through. But you just – you got to be tough, man. You got to be tough. You got to be um, – uh, reactionary um um you got you got it you got it so all right so d-line play you got you got to be tough and you got to be um able to react without thinking too hard you know what i mean like you you have to be able to like you it's muscle memory it's a lot of stuff and that takes confidence that takes confidence in yourself and your ability like you know what i mean like your physical skill and all that kind of stuff like when I, you move to the second level you have to process stuff as the play is going on, you're not at the first level. Things are happening so fast. You don't really have a whole lot of time to process. It's like, boom, boom, boom. Like he goes away. Boom, you know what I mean? Like you replace, like you just, you just have to, how do you know? You just have to know it. You know, the guard goes down, you follow, you know, you just, you just, you just go, you know, you just, you just do it. Um, and, you, and you need that. And that takes a confident person. Like it takes like, you know, because otherwise you get the guys who are like, you know, they fire off the ball and they're like trying to like figure uh, where do you know man like there's no time for that like you need you need that kid who is just like you tell him to go over there he just goes over there why are you going over there i don't know sir you told me to go over here you know what i mean like but as you get older you call need it elephants understand. on parade is what we call us take off running to the left you know I mean? <laughs> just like, okay like just everyone and then the whole everyone on the defense runs with you i mean you call the ball. <laughs> it seems like a cartoon to me <laughs> it was there's so uh, um <laughs> whatever you ever seen uh you ever seen a uh, uh, golden child like i thought you said to stay on the path like i know but you must know when to break the rules that's the thing though because <laughs> everybody goes that way and then it's a screen so you always have that one d tackle that's smarter than the average bear who like you know like like oh no nah, i've seen this one that was you. <laughs> you know like, oh, like, and, and you catch it like and so it's like you it's that's the confidence that's the confidence that gets you to the next level because you know what i mean like it's all like it's all you have to sell out bro. like in order to beat you guys that you tackles around the edge like i'm rushing i'm selling out like if i if i get to that corner i got a sack if i don't you're gonna be on top of me and i might break a bone you know what i mean it's like it, but it's all it's all in one way or the other like there's no there's no time there's no there's no time to to sit around and be like oh maybe i can get around them or indecision no nah, man like i'm going i'm going there i'm going around him. either i'm gonna beat him or he's gonna beat me one way or the other like you know, somebody's going to win. Who's going to win? I believe it's me, you know? So is your advice to those D linemen, like to look at the guy they're about ready to beat or look for the ball? Beat the guy in front of you. <laughs> That's it. Like okay. figure out, figure for study that guy as hard as you possibly can understand what the defense is asking you to do. And then study this guy. Like this guy is going to tell you everything, watch him, learn him, like watch him over and over and over again during the course of the week, watch what he does the same, watch what he does differently, watch what he's done throughout his career and like, and, and try to like really, really get a, a beat on it and figure it out so that you're playing him. You're playing that man. And then learn what the defense, what, learn what the offenses are, are trying to do to you on down and distance, like what part of the field, like listen to that stuff that they, that they, that they give you these nuggets. Like, Hey, they only run certain plays on this part of the field. Hey, they only run, you know, certain things, you know, in the red zone or this and that. And like store that stuff in your mind and then make the best choice that you can pre-snap and trust yourself and then just go. Like you think it's a, it's a screen. Don't, Oh, it might be a screen. No, it's a screen go get the screen. You know what I mean? And over time, like you'll do it enough. You you can really trust yourself and let your athletic ability, like, like come out, but there's, you, you got to have confidence. That's what I was saying earlier. Like, like Phil comes yeah. in and everybody plays with more confidence. Like confidence is infectious. You know what I mean? And you see somebody make a play. Now you want to go make a play. Good. All right. Go make it. There you go. That's good life advice. Just go make a play. <laughs> that, it's that easy bro it's that easy. that's it just, it's, just, it's simple go make a play. Yeah. all right well matthias jeremy thanks as always and thank you all for listening boston college will face florida state should be a fun game this saturday at noon at alumni stadium chance for the eagles to win their third straight and that eight win plateau is still within reach so we'll see what happens thanks again and have a great night you guys got to cut me off a little more, man. I did way too much talking that time. I was, you, hey, you guys just let me roll. From now so, on, this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go. Someone's got to do it. <laughs> All righty. Take care.